lots going on with respect to the marketing of ACA and Medicare plans. And here to talk with me about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. Pleasure. So uh, where to begin? Uh, you want to start with ACA plans? What's going on there? Sure, Bob. We've talked about fraud prevention, for example, a lot uh, between the two, two of us. We've talked about ACA. We've talked about Medicare. Last time, over the recent past, we've heard reports, we received reports about widespread wrongdoing by agents, meaning that you may have been on a ACA plan through the marketplace and unknowingly your plan was switched. This has caused a great deal of alarm and rightfully so. The CMS has imposed a new rule, which is simply that you don't get to change the agent of record, the assister, on the marketplace without a three-way phone call, which effectively ends the way that people can be enrolled from broker one to broker two. Now, I don't think this is over. This was very recently announced and the ripple effects of this are not 100% positive. There may have been very good reason You've relocated to another state. You've some. You've had a life-changing event. You this hap, You enrolled originally years ago. All of these you cannot change from one agent to another. So it's early, but certainly on the CMS's radar to try to prevent wrongdoing for sure. So you mentioned a, a three-way call. Who's on that call? Is it CMS, broker one, broker two, and the uh, client? Client, new broker, and the CMS. Correct. And I'm guess and I'm guessing that the CMS is there in some sort of referee position to evaluate whether or not the change is legitimate and ought to be done. It's. It's too early for me to actually have an opinion about, you know, what the role of the CMS is. But I think really what it is, is that the CMS just verifying that the applicant, the person, the consumer does intend to change and why. Now, whether or not the CMS person is there to determine whether or not that plan is best, I doubt it but certainly a layer of protection for the consumer who now has to be agreed to be on this call in order to even be accepting the advice of a new broker, a new agent of record. So in, um, in the article that we write that will accompany this video, we'll uh, provide a link to the CMS press release that outlines what they're doing so people can get a deeper dive into it. Anything else that we missed or with respect to this, um, this, <laughs> this, uh, this crackdown? Crackdown is a very good word, Bob. I still would say that, you know, there can be reasons for changing broker for whatever reason. The broker has retired. The, like, again, you've moved location, etc. That said, while a very, very strict new guideline certain cases it may still be worth it as a consumer to have other guidance for your benefit to get to the right fitting health insurance plan for you yourself your family right so one one last question about this and we'll move on to what's going on with uh, medicare marketing mm. is uh, you mentioned that this applies to someone who bought their ACA plan through the marketplace. What if they bought them through a, a state sponsored exchange? Same thing. Yes, absolutely the same thing. So you would have to be uh, through any where you're receiving the APTC. That's correct. Right. All right. So there is a uh, lawsuit that's putting the marketing of Medicare plans into uh, into the muck as we approach 2025. Tell us more about that. 
a number of months ago, the CMS completely changed the way that your personal information can be distributed and the way that Mar Medicare is marketed and the way that agents and brokers are compensated under for Medicare plans. And that is for Part D and for Medicare Advantage plans. For example, when you call a commercial, the hotline on a commercial, the reality is, is that your information can be distributed to not only that party, but to many. Now, the CMS was proposing that before that transfer occurred, you would have to provide written permission to do so. That and many other elements about the way that Medicare plans are marketed were modified by the CMS. When it first came out and I saw it, I actually posted a comment on LinkedIn saying, I'm very certain that attorneys are going to be involved here. And certain, certainly enough, what ended up happening is the brokerage community has filed and the courts have now stayed. The CMS prevented them from doing so, imposing these new rules. So people, including myself, are you know, in the dark in the sense that we do not know precisely what the rules will be. And we are getting precariously close to the beginning of the Medicare annual election period to begin on October 15th. Yeah. So you are in the dark. The folks who are about to enroll uh, or evaluate their plans are even in a darker place. What, what advice do you have for them? It is still the case for Medicare beneficiaries and future Medicare beneficiaries to get well educated on how Medicare works, the language of Medicare. Crazy people write books and you know appear appear on in the media a lot about <laughs> Medicare topics. It is still central. It is still central. And while confusing, while there are late enrollment penalties. The vast majority, once these hurdles are crossed, once overcome, that the fact of the matter is, is that Medicare beneficiaries, the satisfaction level exceptionally high compared to any health insurance that they've had, you know, for, throughout their adult life. You know, as, as you're describing this, Jay, I'm thinking, uh, what's, what's the harm to the beneficiary in having that information shared? Do you have a sense of that? Well, the issue can be that now the your personal contact information has been redistributed to many parties, and then you are then subject to these calls. Now, the reality is, is I know firsthand that this is going on today, which is that people are being receiving unsolicited phone calls already about Medicare Advantage, for example. This alone, even prior to the marketing rule changes, is not to be permitted. And we've discussed this and my simple way, my simple approach, if you are called, is to simply ask the person, what's your NPN? And NPN is national producer number. It is the singular identifying number per person that identifies that person as an agent, a licensed person. And that person is subject to these rules, meaning that they're not supposed to be calling you outside of particular, for under Medicare Advantage plans or Part D in an unsolicited way ever. So as a result, by asking them their, for their NPN, you are basically stopping the conversation unless they're that certain that they are making an authorized call. Yeah. So just as a follow-up, after you get someone's NPN number, is there a way to check that number and verify that that is indeed the person that you're speaking to? I, I don't know how easy it is for someone to just say a number and and uh, and uh, have and still um, have the consumer believe that that's, in fact, accurate. Th that is a very good question, Bob. Every state will have a registry for 
licensed brokers in that state. And one of the identifying numbers will be the NPN because that's a one that crosses every state. It is a federally universal number. So I think about these inbound phone calls, unsolicited phone calls, um, there's no reason why um, uh, folks will, companies will stop sending direct mailers to someone's address. Is that fair to say? So what ends up happening is on the mailers, you, let's say you respond. Currently, as the rules stand, the your information can be redistributed to many. The CMS rules were intended or written to stop this without your written permission. That said, again, we're in the dark a bit, <laughs> meaning that we are not certain the way the rule stands uh, going into the annual election period to be begun just a couple of weeks away, it seems like. Well, you're in the dark and my head is spinning, but I do, want to thank, I do want to thank you as always for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. This is, as always, one of those complicated topics that you have seemed to explain to us in plain English so that everyone can understand what's about to happen, even, even if we're in the dark. Even if we're in the dark. Thanks for having me, Bob.